Um, so this is session is open for questions. So uh, I would just would like to ask a first question to the speakers, and then I will open uh, to the uh, audience. So. Because, of course, you've been talking about uh, the richness of the Bengali uh, history and identity. And I was wondering, you know, you both talked about the importance of culture and language, but also how um, uh, the, the cult Bengali culture uh, emerges out of several influences. So I was wondering, how much awareness do you think there is in the diasporic context, uh, but not only within British Bengalis, but in general in Britain, given the post-colonial relationship of the history and the unique character of Bengali identity or British Bengali identity? Or how important it is, do you think, to, you know, to, to get these stories out? The answer is actually no, not much awareness. And, uh, but we know that um, good news is no news. People would know Bangladesh for flood, poverty, all that, but it's gone for ages. The strength that we have shown um, in 1971, this is unparalleled. A country didn't want to go for a war. It was an imposed war. And then um, the country won the war. Why there is not awareness? It's like my friend, and, and really uh, I adore his poetry, is called Benjamin Zephaniah. And Benjamin Zephaniah's one of the book for children, he is very multilingual. All his stuff is, uh, you know, uh, targeted to the children and really nice. I loved one of the line, the in the classroom, the teacher always teaches the history, African history, Asian history, Mongolian history, Chinese history. He was asking in a poem, dear teacher, you are telling the story when we were slaves. But we have our history even before. So that is what it is. It is the people who are teaching, who are making the curriculum. And it is the politicians, really. We have got our representatives like Saima is a councillor. I mean, it's been a long time in our bara. We have got dozens and dozens of councillors. And the, in the education, if you don't put it into the education in the form of stories, how people will be aware of it? And mostly because Bangladesh was a part of Pakistan. And not only that, Bangladesh was a part of India. So it's like you have to go two layers to explain about it. Okay, Simon, do you want to say something? Um, I, I think you've said most of it, but to answer you plain and simply, Clelia, I think I wouldn't say there is no awareness. There is um, the ever present notion of, yes, we belong somewhere. The belongingness is there. But I think we were not taught well enough how to relate to it. I think sometimes in the layers of history and political complications, um, political uh, complexities, to be honest, um, the very human story got lost. Bangladesh faced the biggest genocide in the 20th century. Who, knew, who knows? How many knows about that? We are heavily underrepresented, to be honest. Now, what these sort of sad stories or um, the stories of resilience, sometimes I have seen put a lot of people off because they see only the political side of things. But what I think is, if one stands strongly on the roots of culture, which is purely based on secularism, I think it's very easy to see through that as South Asians, as Bangladeshis, as Bengali, there is so much to celebrate, be proud of. Like they say that, um, you know, there is more things that 
brings us together than those that divide us. So I think that's what it is about. We have to hold such sessions um, to tell our stories. And now, um, the those who have been colonized and been spoken to needs to speak back. And this is the process how we do it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think there's a gentleman here. Thank you. Um, today we are celebrating South Asian Heritage Month, right? So it is a great pleasure that uh, my name is Numan Azmi. I am a member of the South Asian Heritage Month National Organizing Team. I'm the only Bangladeshi member. So it's, it's my pleasure to be here today. Uh, also, <coughs> uh, I want to do, um, Sister uh, Shami Mazad mentioned something which we, very people know, very few people know. We all know about international mother language, eh? but very people will know about the history of it, that, that is deeply rooted in our culture. So I wanted to understand your th uh, thoughts about why is it the people know about international mother language, eh? but very people know that its history is deeply rooted in our Bangla language movement. And as a son of one of the leaders of Bangla, Bangla language movement, my father was the one who uh, read the uh, uh, memoranda demanding Bangla to be the uh, state language yeah. first in 1948 March in race course uh, ground when he was the general secretary of Dhaka University Students Union. So it's very p proud day for me to be discussing about international mother language, but I think we everyone should know the history of Bangladesh, Bangla language, and why it is so important for us, the language. Thank mm. you. Thank you. Um, actually, I couldn't even cover the history. I had all this long list. There were some significant years and months and the moments that was actually um, uh, instrumental to make this happen. But the history wasn't reflected. Uh, I, I, mean, I mean, to me, it feels like um, the way you are, you are understanding, the way the need from abroad is there. I think from Bangladesh, um, somehow or other, we miss that. Because uh, throughout the whole world, we have got high commissions. We have got connection with Bangladesh. And uh, in international, when it becomes International Language Month, that was the opportunity as well to tell the history. So probably, you know, I think we, we the people uh, who are here, we all have to think about it, how we can do it here. And, and the people in back home, this message should go to them that this is a package that should be delivered throughout the world, through education, through entertainment, through cultural festival. And storytelling is the main tool. There are so many amazing stories. We can use that. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to add a few good news, I think, based on what has been going on locally. Um, I would like to thank Ruxana first because BSK UK just did an amazing project with schools um, that we called uh, under Spirit of 52. So we went to primary and secondary schools. We have reached more than 400 students and we talked about International Mother Language Day and why it means so much to us. What is the spirit behind it? Not the political big P stuff, but the small P for political stuff that could actually resonate and get respect for all languages, no matter where we are, because it gives us more power to love other languages as well. Um, the second thing I would say is um, saying a few things that how embassies could make a big difference. So I want to mention one ambassador, one of my closest friend, Riaz Hamidullah. He, when he was in Sri Lanka, he started uh, cele uh, celebrating with the government, with the local government, like how we can promote uh, this um, International Mother Language Day. Now he's long gone from that country. Sri Lanka celebrates International Mother Language Day nationally because of one ambassador. I think it's very important that these messages can go through, can happen, it is possible when you put heart to it. Thank you. Well, I'm is it Hi there, I'm uh, Riyad Karim or Shaun, and um, I work for the NHS. But moreover, I'm 
a son of a Bangladeshi and a grandson of a Bangladeshi. And I'm very proud to honor the traditions of, uh, of the people that came before me. But also it's so important in this kind of second and third generation as the increasing uh, presence of Bangladeshis in the civic and life of this country, of this capital city, of which there are 333,000 registered Bangladeshi people, probably much more than that. I think it's high time that we have an event like that. And I'm very grateful to Brit Bangla and Tareen for organizing this with Loughborough University and yourselves because I really believe that Bangladesh and notions of Bangladesh fall through the cracks far too often. And far too often we have to say, what is Bangladesh? You know, to many people, we're all ambassadors. I was actually brought up in a pit village where my father was the only Bangladeshi doctor there in the 70s. And for me, trying to understand what my identity was when actually I was called quite often a racial slur with a P word, I want to know, well, am I actually Pakistani? because people keep often referring to me as the P word, <laughs> and I would say, no, I'm actually Bangladeshi. And it didn't seem to make matters any better for my racial aggressors. <laughs> uh, but my father kept and said, keep your head down, study, study hard, and all that kind of stuff, which every Bangladeshi child has to well, often hear. I say that to my son as well. It's a kind of tradition, isn't it? Keep your head down. But I think that process of rediscovery, of understanding where did Pakistan come from, where did India come from, and and the Bengali traditions and the, the Delhi Sultanate and then before that, et cetera, going back, 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 you really realize the kind of stuff that you were talking about, Saima, how much we, as a Bengali nation, have resisted empires and have got this kind of amalgam and this composite nationalism, which is very dynamic, isn't it? And I think this is important more and more now today as we see the specter of religious communalism mounting in many nations and many people. And Absolutely. even in our wonderful diverse city, we mustn't allow it to divide ourselves. Absolutely. And it's so important that actually Bangladesh and Bengali nationalism and the language movement provides the actual vehicle for us to learn how a people kind of got to the point where they actually voted for religious communalism, mm. regrettably, what led to that, and then they charted the course back to normalcy. That brave course to be form a nation state, to believe in a state where Bangla Musuman, Bangla Boddu, Bangla Christian, Bangla Musuman, Amra Shobai, Bangali. Bangali. Now, how, I don't even know how to read Bengali brought up in a pit village, but I had that connection that my dad, every Sunday he would go through Utkam Kumar films and the kind of uh, <laughs> Shagori car and, uh, you know, the Bengali literature, and he would say how the I'm, Jawans went. I'm going went to come to, into that. You know, Thank and, you. you know, and, and, you know, the Jawans went to him and, you know, like many DMCH medical graduates and said, where is the doctor on that night? And they're rounding up doctors. And it was, and, and many died. Many, many died. Many intellectuals died. And I, I suppose... Even though I am not from Bangladesh, that, as Simon knows, it's that connection of the second and third generation. How do we connect it? And it's so important. That story of the language movement resonates the importance of secularity. That we all have different religions, and many of us don't. But it's important to respect the other and understand how brave the Bangladeshi women and the Bangladeshi men have fought for their independence. And we have to now commit that this new generation that born bred here become mayor of this capital, <laughs> prime minister <laughs> of this nation. Of course. Charlotte. And because we are best suited to that, because even though many of us are Muslim, we have that connection with our previous Hinduism. My name is Shawan. Shawan is not an Islamic name. Bengali name. It My name is, Bengali. it's a Bengali name, exactly. <laughs> so it's what I'm saying is we have that this beauty of religious and ethnic tapestry and secularity in the political space that is actually a role model for many nations to follow. And look at Bangladesh now, charging into the new millennium. By 2077, it will more than likely be a G22 state. So nothing to be ashamed of, kids, Bangladesh. Something to be proud of. So that when you know that you've got a deep history, which is rich and diverse and not black and white in the gray, you know you can forge uh, a, bu a beautiful future wherever you are. But I just want to say thank you so much for inspiring us uh, that we have this kind of a forum. Finally, the Bangladeshi voice awakens, does it not? Actually, uh, clearly, yeah. <laughs>
I would I, I would like to say that you know this is I felt like this is a privilege that I've been invited to this kind of forum and share the experience. It doesn't happen so often. So two things I'm going to make it short. Like the people who are here, and we are from various backgrounds, but there are probably some people who has the heritage from Bangladesh. Before you go home, ask yourself a question. How many times you had been sharing the good news and the history of Bangladesh in your dining table with your son and daughter? It's only one click away. Now you don't need a teacher. You don't ne need a forum like this. It's the parents can inspire to find their own roots. The truth is there. The truth is there. And they can explore themselves. And celebration can be organized, but the first job belongs to the parents. Number two, Britain actually doesn't want a society. They should be monofocused. We are a multilingual, multicultural society. Everybody has got their own strength. And strength in this case is your own heritage. If you are not proud of yourself, how can you be proud of a uh, good British? So these are the two things. I had been teacher for a long time. I'm sorry. This is, uh, this is I'm going to the teaching mood. But it is true, though. Um, I think, um, Saima. Um, no, I just wanted to add uh, one thing is that um, I became terribly aware of the South Asian Heritage Month, which is supposed to be celebrating all the South Asian countries, um, has also become, um, I, I should say, windowed or boxed, celebrating one or two countries. And this is something that I've raised with my council and many other places, where we see, when we talk about South, South Asian history or heritage, we're only talking about Bangladesh, India, Pakistan, or India only, or India and Pakistan only, or India, you know, it goes like that in a loop. But there are other countries in South Absolutely. Asia. It's a big place. Are we hearing their voices too? So we must remember that when we are telling stories, we are telling stories in alliance with our South Asian neighbors, not just us. And then that creates another loop us and them again. So we don't want to get into that. But thank you. We don't even know their names of other countries. Exactly. In Nepal, Bhutan, exactly. Pakistan. Yeah, Sri Lanka. Yeah, Sri Lanka. <laughs> I mentioned. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But the fact that Mohan Bhai, that you are the only Bangladeshi on that South Asian Heritage Month is telling. Yes. It's glad that you are. We are so yes. honored that you are there. Well, but the it just reason shows is that yeah. it wasn't restricted. Oh, we all it no. was asked whoever wants to come. We need more Bangladeshi to join our, 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 our board. We are appealing for people from Bangladesh heritage to come join South Asian heritage month campaign. <coughs> it's not we are restricting, it's our community are not coming forward. That's the problem. Thank you, thank you all very much. I think we are running a bit late, but if there's one last question we can uh, yes, please. Hi, um, I think Shamim Azad already knows me. Anyway, I'm a first generation, I think, maybe second generation. My parents were born in Bangladesh. Having gone back after a very long time, I properly fell in love with it. Um, actually, I'm wearing a Togo t-shirt and a Bangladesh map and everything. So my question is, being British Bangladeshi Sileti, there are um, rising Sileti educators who are very kind of violent online, who are saying that we're not Bengali. And also within people, like people who are Sileti, who are born in Bangladesh, um, obviously know how to speak Bangla because it's like the state language, but now there's divisions and it's very ironic because obviously people fought for the language, right? So my question is like, are we Bengali and how do we kind of deal with these people who are making divisions? And now we're at a place like, we, I don't know, like what am I, even though obviously Silet is in Bangladesh, in Bengal, and I do consider myself very, uh, you know, British Bangladeshi and very Bengali. Um, but I, I have seen in the Bengali community there's definite separation. Like if you can't speak Bangla, and it's something that I feel very strongly about. Um, 
thank you very much. Thank you first to, for going back and uh, lo lovely to see you uh, in the uh, in the t-shirt. Um, I think I'll start first uh, very briefly to say this is not a new debate. Um, if you remember, uh, being a, by the way, I'm a Sileti myself, um, and I'm I'm really proud of it. I speak both Sileti, Shuddha Bangla, English, and there are other languages I I can hint. But the thing is, for me, identity is very fluid. I don't mind being a Sileti. I don't mind being a Bengali. I don't mind being a Bangladeshi. I don't mind being other identities. I think it depends on where we stand and where we are. And those who are trying to create a debate is again going p back in putting people in the box. I don't like to be put in a box when it comes to identity because language is a fluid thing. And if we look back, the history of Silat has been like that because it has been first put in India with Assam, then taken out and brought back to Bengal, and then again brought back to Assam. So there has been a big to and fro. Hence, we Siletis have connections everywhere but and also we have less connections to Dhaka and other places so it is it is, has been a historical thing but i don't think it should stop us from saying that we are a proud bengali um i think it's time we get over it thank you um i'm glad that you mentioned about like um how select came into um the uh, inside the map, map of bangladesh and that actually made us proud and that actually gave us a, um, a different identity and we are so proud of our Sileti identity. I, I have come from a Sileti uh, set of parents and um, uh, well what I want to say the important thing is that it is the person and that person's weakness who is putting you into the box. It's not you. You, it's not you. The person who is very shaky because you f uh, they feel like you are so powerful. And when people will start sort of, you know, picking up all those points, it only divides people and it reflects on their ignorance. I would like to say, Sileti is such a brilliant language it had its own history own in script and once upon a time um, we Siletis had the Nagri press all that that actually makes some people really proud of not speaking in the standard Bengali or the national language doesn't matter we can speak not like others, but like ourselves. I will always say that only you will see in our community that people will pick on your accent. But think about national TV here. You have got people and presenters with Scottish accent. You have got presenters and you know known TV journalists with Geordie accent. Do they measure them with the accent? No. It happens only with us. But when we will be robust, when there won't be <laughs> any, any lack of assurance within themselves, people are not going to challenge you, you see? And they know, uh, I'm going to come with a line in Sileti. I don't know how many people are Sileti. There was an argument between two people, and um, one is saying, don't say everything is Dhaka. Is Dhaka is not the. Uh, there are so many districts, and um, the Sileti person was saying, "I didn't mean that actually." Um, the huge community here, mostly from Silet, and he was so unhappy with the other guy. He said, "Ek din ai pa tumi lantern diya tumi Sileti kutum tu kai bai." Because what is it? Because it is the strength where people look up to you. So remember that. Thank you.
Well, you just say oh, only, oh, you, you just, I'm true, and ask them the only one click away. Okay, what was it that, you know, sometimes people drop in, drop in names? I'm just going to say Please. 42 Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And Chittagong, very strong accent. Used to speak to us in Shuddha Bangla. When we went back to Bangladesh and started talking to our cousins, they were like, oh my God, you know, like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Likewise, I say that, you know, living abroad is not a status. So, <laughs> if you are claiming that you don't know Sileti, um, sorry, um, Sileti is not standard Bengali. That's not a status either. Thank you very much. 